now. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And today's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hid. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I bring you greetings on behalf of my lovely wife, who is in Indianapolis. She's on her way back, so she would love to be here, but she says, hi, y'all. Um, and I'm thankful for my colleagues who are here with us today in the person of your regional minister, uh, Valerie Melvin, and then also in the person of your regional elder, Mike Gall. And for all of you who are here, precious in the sight of the Lord are the saints who gather together. So with that, let's go into God's word. Lord God, I pray right now for your word to flow with ease and an anointing and clarity. Make ears receptive to hear and hearts receptive to receive that people may be transformed more and more into your glory by the faith of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Let your light shine. You heard the scripture reading already. You are the light of the world. What kind of light, you might ask? Well, I want to be very clear that uh, I have this in a written form. Whether I stay to it all the way, I don't know because I'm so excited. I'm just going to see how the Lord leads us today. But I want to share this little piece that had uh, shed some light on what we're talking about here when we're talking about letting your light shine. Uh, from Dr. Paul Brand, <clears throat> this was shared by George Manfield in a reading that sort of gives some light into the context of what we're talking about. Dr. Paul Brand was speaking to a medical college in India on let your light shine so before men that they may behold your good works and glorify your father. In front of the lectern was an oil lamp with its cotton wick burning from the shallow dish of oil. As he preached, the lamp ran out of oil, the wick burned dry, and the smoke made him cough. He immediately used the opportunity to say, some of us are here are like this wick. We're trying to shine for the glory of God, but we stink. <laughs> That's what happens when we use ourselves as the fuel of our witness rather than the Holy Spirit. Wicks can last indefinitely, burning brightly without irritating smoke, if the fuel of the Holy Spirit is there in constant supply. You see, letting your light shine means letting us be aware that we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. You know, Colossians says this, for God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing in the glory. That light that we have on the inside of us is the light of none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. See, and it's given, and that light is given to us by the person of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So let me give you another witness from Romans. Romans says this, And hope makes not a shame, because the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. 
The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Everybody say given. Amen. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to be all that to get it. God gives it to us. And that's what I like about the God we serve. Just like you are. Because you made the decision to say yes to Jesus Christ, God gives you, by his grace, the spirit to live, walk, and move on the inside of you. That's the light that we're talking about. You know, the profound revelation of God to the believer is Christ in you, a personal knowledge of God and a personal relationship with God that comes by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. I like what Corinthians says, too, as another witness. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 through 7 says this. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made his light to shine in our hearts, so that we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We know we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we also ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great, great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not ourselves. So the first point I want to make is very clear, clearly this. We have to know who we are in God. Know who we are. Know what you are. We are the light of the world. Now, what about that light that we have it? Well, I, I like to understand that when we have this light, we just have to just let it be. Yeah, let it be. Let the light be wherever you are. Let your light shine wherever you go. Wherever you are, I kind of liken it to, uh, for those who might know mm, Paul McCartney and the Beatles, he said, just let it be. When I find myself in times of trouble, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, let it be. And more of the line goes like this. And when the night is cloudy and there is still a light that shines on me, shine on till tomorrow, let it be. Let it be, let it be. Oh, yeah, just let it be. There will be an answer. Let it be. So let your light shine doesn't mean you have to make it or fake it. It's a reflection of what's already on the, on, on the inside of you. I like what Eric Ferguson says about the author Robert Fogram, who tells a story of one of his professors, a wise man whose name was Alexander Papaderos. At the last session on the last morning of a two-week seminar on Greek culture, Dr. Papaderos learned, turned, and made the ritual gesture, are there any questions? A quiet came over the room. These two weeks had generated enough questions for a lifetime, but for now, there was only silence. No questions. Papaderos swept the room with his eyes. So I asked, Dr. Pepperderos, what's the meaning of life? The usual laughter followed and people stirred to go. Pepperderos held up his hand and stilled the room and looked at me for a long time, asking with his eyes if I was serious and seeing that my eyes were serious in asking the question. So the professor said, I'll answer the question. Taking his wallet out of his pocket, he fished into his pocket for a leather billfold and brought out a very small round mirror about the size of a quarter. And what he said went something like this. When I was a small child during the war, we were very poor and we lived in a remote village. One day on the road, I found broken pieces of mirror. A German motorcycle had been wrecked in that place. I tried to find all the pieces and put them together, but it was not possible, so I kept only the largest piece, this one. And by scratching it on a stone, I made it round. 
I began to play with it as a toy and became fascinated by the fact that I could reflect light into dark places where the sun would never shine, in deep holes, in crevices, and in dark closets. It became a game for me to let light into the most inaccessible places that I could find. I kept the little mirror, and as I went about my growing up, I would take, out, take it out in idle moments and continue the challenge of the game. As I became a man, I grew to understand that this was not just a child's game, but a metaphor that I might live my life by. I came to understand that I'm not the light or the source of the light, but light, truth, understanding, knowledge is already there. And it will only shine in many dark places if I reflect it. I'm a fragment of a mirror whose whole design and shape I do not know. Nevertheless, what I have, I can reflect that light into dark places of this world, into black places in the hearts of men, and change some things in some people. Perhaps others may see and do likewise. This is what I'm about. This is the meaning of life. And then he took his small mirror and holding it carefully, he caught the bright rays that were shining through the window and streaming through the window and reflected them onto the face and onto the hands of the one who asked the question. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And as his followers, we are to be like that little mirror, reflecting the light of Christ unto the dark corners of the world. This is the meaning of Christian life. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. I also like what our brother John also says about this. You know, John the Apostle, he gave this word. And again, I give you a new commandment. I write to you, which thing is true in him? and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shines. And he said, he is the light. He that says that he's in the light and hates his brother or sister is in darkness even until now. But he that loves his brother or sister abides in the light and there is no occasion of stumbling in him or her. But he or those who hates their brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and knows not where they're going because darkness had blinded their eyes. Let your light shine in a way that you love your brothers and sisters in Christ. And this hope, I'm reminding us, will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. You see, Love is what keeps a congregation together. Love will keep us together, as Neil Sadaka said in the 70s. Some of you are old enough to remember him. You remember Captain and Tennille? Wave your hand if you do. Those who don't, don't worry about it. Love. Love will keep us together, but be there forever. Love will keep us together, said it before, I'll say it again, while others pretend I'll need you to know, and I'll need to tell you now. And I like this part right here. It says, stop, because I really love you. Stop, I'll be thinking of you. Look in my heart and let love. I felt you. I felt you. I felt you. I knew I could, could go right there with it. Yeah, let love keep you together. And then finally, I'll wrap this up by saying, one, we got to know who we are in Christ. We are the light of the world. Two, you just got to let it be. Let that light shine. And three, as the text said, that light is not our light. That light is the light of Christ we're reflecting. So be thankful for Christ shining in you and through you. Be thankful. Be thankful for the myriad of ways Christ shines through you lit by the Holy Spirit. Let me simply illustrate some simple ways God's light shines through you in this poem by Rachel Dansby Freeman. When a flashlight grows dim or quits working, 
Do you just throw it away? Of course not. You change the batteries. When a person messes up or finds themselves in a dark place, do you cast them aside? Of course not. You help them change their batteries. Listen to this. Some need double A, <laughs> attention and affection. Some need, and I need a lot of these, triple A, attention, affection, and acceptance. Some need C, compassion. Some need D, direction. And if they still don't seem to shine, simply sit with them quietly and share your light until they do. Let your light shine. Know who you are. Let it be wherever you are. Be thankful for Christ shining through you. Know who you are. Let it be. And thank God. Let the church say amen. amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we're thankful for this word that has gone forth about letting our light shine. May hearts be receptive. May hearts be changed. And may, may lives be encouraged to live in such a way that we realize that we live only to reflect your glory in this earth. And we'll be sure to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen.